are two members of Congress, Melissa Bean and Luis Gutierrez. Both are Democrats, but they have very different views on this issue. Representative Bean, why do you want to extend the tax breaks on everybody, including that upper two or three percent? Well, while we are seeing a recovery in our economy, it's a fragile recovery, and I would hate to jeopardize that uh, by not extending cuts to all levels of income, particularly given that the top 2% represent 25% of consumer spending. And that's what you're saying, that, that's an engine of the recovery. That's, that's what's in jeopardy if, Very much we, so. if we don't, if we raise taxes on the upper income, some of that spending will go down and the recovery would be hurt. Well, we don't know that it would, but we don't know that it wouldn't, and, and that's the concern. And All right. we've heard, I've heard from economists, from families, from business owners uh, that have those concerns, and I share those concerns. All right. Well, the man sitting next to you, your fellow Democrat, uh, Luis Gutierrez, disagrees. Uh, Louis, uh, what's the problem with what your colleague is saying here? Well, first of all, it's going to cost us $70 billion uh, for the wealthiest 2% of wage earners uh, in the United States. $70 billion a year for 10, $700 billion. $70 billion Look, a year. there are year. people dying a year for 10 years is $700 billion. Uh, we already have a deficit. Here's what I think. 98%, those are people I know, people I go to church with, people I enroll my kids at school with, people who live on my block. And as we know, our economy, 75% uh, of our economy or better is driven by what? Purchases, that is people going to the store and buying stuff. Guess what? It's put out $700 billion out there uh, to people that uh, at, at the 98%, that 98%, they're gonna go out to the store and purchase things. You know, the billionaires and millionaires, and they keep calling it class warfare. I mean, they're gonna buy another villa out in France, maybe another Rolls Royce, another Rolex, all foreign things. I want people to have money, buy American products, and invigorate the economy. And let me just say, the richest people in the United States are going to get richer because the economy will improve. They'll buy the goods that they manufacture also, and everybody does well. Well, now, Look, in fairness to the it's argument time made, to have a little sacrifice, especially with the richest. Now, in fairness, though, uh, Congressman, to the argument made by uh, Representative Bean there, um, she's arguing that uh, a disproportional share of uh, the consumer spending, 20 percent, 25 percent, 30 percent, comes from that top two percent. And they employ the people in your district who uh, cook the food, who sell the dresses and, and sell the Jaguars. Uh, that's, that's an argument uh, for, you know, the, that, that's the sure. classic trickle-down you, argument. You know, you're right. You know what? You're right. And it is Ronald Reagan, trickle-down economics. If you give the rich tax breaks, they're going to be kind to the rest of us. But here's what I say. You know what? I get a deduction on my income taxes because I buy a house right why don't we say hey why don't we amend this whole thing to say you know the richest two percent you're gonna get a tax break once you've demonstrated to us that you took that tax break and you created a job with it the same way that I get a tax break once I buy a house that way there's a correlation I know everybody says trust the rich they'll create the jobs I say you know like Ronald Reagan trust but verify I think that would be a very reasonable compromise on this issue Representative Bean, I would like to say one. I would like to say one thing. Uh, I would concur uh, with Luis on the 700 billion as being something that we can't afford, and I don't think we should be borrowing money to extend those tax cuts at this time. But to do a temporary extension at this time and see how the recovery moves forward is what I'm advocating for. There are some in the Congress that are supporting a $700 billion extension. Uh, it'd be $38 billion for a one-year extension, for instance. So you, do you favor just a one-year extension, Representative? I think at this time, that's what's most easy to pay for. Uh, as many economists have also expressed concerns about borrowing uh, money from foreign countries to support tax cuts, which I don't think is wise at this time either, because there are deficit concerns. And as a fiscal hawk that's been very concerned about the deficit, we have to balance all of those issues as we move forward in a recovering economy. Is it uncomfortable for you to split with your fellow Democrats uh, on this issue? The president has been very forceful in recent days about it. Uh, has that been difficult to do, or is that something you're comfortable with? I think I've proven that I'm pretty comfortable differing with my party when I believe a particular policy is the right way to move forward uh, for our economy. And what's great about our caucus is uh, we often have respectful uh, differences 
and debate, and I think that's healthy uh, for our country, and we usually come to better policy in the long run uh, because of that deliberation. And let, me, let me ask you, then, then we'll get to Congressman Gutierrez for a final statement, but uh, wh what about the argument made, Representative Bean, uh, that uh, it's, it's the, the Jaguars and the villas in the south of France that the rich uh, don't need uh, us to be giving them tax cuts? Well, I'll let Luis make his argument, and I'll make mine. Do you, you, do you want to get into that at all? you're not getting us to fight with one. Well, no. <laughs> hey, look, Melissa and I, we work together in the Congress of the United States. Obviously, we have a disagreement. Your viewers have heard our disagreement. It's okay to be uh, disagree without being disagreeable with one another. Tomorrow, we're going to have to roll up our sleeves. We work together to pass health care uh, reform. We work together on a number of issues. There's things we're not going to disagree. I'd rather, like, sit in the back. You know, when we go to go vote, sit down with Melissa and say, let's work this thing out. But because this is America, a great democracy, we get to come on with you, Mike Flannery, right. tonight and, and tell and, people uh, our differences. Congressman, I can't ignore But at ignore the same time, we don't need to get ugly. I can't ignore the fact that you're, of course, ahead, uh, exploring Mike. a run for mayor of Chicago. <laughs> How's that going? <laughs> how soon, going how soon do you make a decision? Lots of enthusiasm. You know, I'm busy trying to make sure that people get the money in their pocket, get health care, and that we get this economy. If you're going to be mayor of the city of Chicago, you better have a jobs program. I'd be a miserable candidate for mayor if I didn't do my job here in Congress first, which we can do well before we have to fill out those petitions and create jobs straight from here, right. from the federal government. So that's what I'm going to be focused on. Louise, Melissa, we've thank both you both been very much. very unified on. Go all right, ahead. thank you for having us on. Right. Bye, Mike. Thanks. Take oh, you're going to let me finish that sentence? Yeah, go ahead. Finish that sentence. <laughs> okay. Good night. Oh, what I was going to say is that we have seen uh, a slow but but a recovery in terms of jobs, not only in Illinois where we've yeah. seen a drop in unemployment, uh, but nationally in the creation of 760,000 private sector jobs over the last eight months, and we want that to continue. All right, thank you very.